maximalism, the opposite of minimalism. And today we're going to get into it. So I've noticed that there has been quite a bit of discussions around minimalism and is it dead? <laughs> I don't know if it's dead. I think there's always going to be people who just love minimalism, but I do think there is a very big resurgence or gravitation towards some more traditional styles, which tend to fall more into the maximalism mindset, which is, you know, that eclectic vibe, the grand millennial vibe, basically a little bit more stuff around, a little bit more um, coziness factor is kind of where I would put it. We are definitely seeing a time where people are moving a little bit further away from minimalism. So today I'm going to deep dive into maximalism, what it is, and what are some of the you know key characteristics behind it maximalism is as you would probably assume a very loud style uh it doesn't have to be loud but it is a louder style so a lot of times with maximalism you're going to see a lot more patterns a lot more colors a lot of curated collection pieces one of the things with maximalism that you really do need to understand is it doesn't just mean filling up your space with lots of stuff. The way to achieve this look is really to curate your space around color and prints and items and collections and actually give it still a cohesive look and still look as if it was well designed and well put together. However, it is definitely just including um, more than the bare minimum. This style is not intended to be messy or super random either. You don't have to like fully commit to this look to still achieve it, but definitely with maximalism, there is some traits that will get you the look just right. So let's talk about some of the basics with maximalism. So one of the key points is definitely wanting to use and embrace color. One of the other things that I absolutely love about this look is not just embracing color, but also embracing artwork. I think that is absolutely one of the best parts of this look is that you know, instead of just having that one singular curated piece, here is where you could really expand, do an art wall, show lots of items. That's really going to look beautiful in maximalistic interior design. Another factor is comfort. I've mentioned that already. We definitely want to make sure that we are having a comfortable space, a space where you feel like you can really hunker down, enjoy a good book and feel really cozy, you know, next to a fireplace if you have one, but basically it is really striving for a comfortable atmosphere. And one of my favorites, uh, books. <laughs> this is a book lover's dream. One thing with maximalism is if you love books, if you have a collection, this is the look for you because displaying that collection is a big part of making this look. Just really take that next level of comfort. I find that having books really take maximalism to the next level because it's one of those things that, I don't know, me personally, I feel like any comfortable home has a wide selection of books that you can choose from. And this look does not disappoint. One of the overall caveats to this look is it's not about perfection. It's definitely about personalization and making it a space that tells your story. So much like the eclectic vibe, much like the grand millennial style, um, even sometimes the boho eclectic style, you really do want the space to be more about you and your home and your family versus a completely curated kind of more cooler look where it's like minimalism. You don't really have like a lot of personal stuff in it. So you don't really tell too much of like your personal story. It's more of an architectural showcase or like, you know, a certain, like if you have like an Eames chair or something like that's more minimalism. It's more art, art, artistic, I guess. Eh, I don't know if that's the word I wanna go with, but basically this one is more about storytelling. It's more about your, who you are as a person and as the owner of the home. So right now in the maximalism color scheme, you are noticing really dark colors being used. Kind of like what I have going on in here with the black, the dark blacks, the dark blacks, <laughs> the blacks, the really deep greens, those hunter greens or forest greens are super hot right now in this look. You're seeing a lot of really deep undertones 
that's really being used in this look. However, bold colors in general go really, you know, well with this theme. But one of those things I do find when you are doing this look and you're creating a space around the maximalistic interior design style, you're for some reason, when you have darker colors, it really does feel a lot cozier. And it's kind of one of those things, right? When you have dark colors, it brings the space in. And when you have light colors, it makes it feel bigger. But it doesn't mean that if you have a smaller space, you can't use dark colors. It really just depends on the look you're going for. And with this look, it will work really, really well to bring in some dark, bold color palettes. However, any color is good, but the dark colors that we're really seeing right now is really hot with this look at this moment. And a little trick, if you are gonna do dark walls, is bringing some bold accents. So think like, you know, yellows and pinks and like some bright, fun colors to actually bring in and layer on top of it so that it still has dimension to the space. We don't want it to feel like too cave-like. We definitely need it to have some layering in patterns and textures and colors, but starting with a dark palette is not a bad thing in this look. It's actually a really good thing. If you love artwork and you love a great gallery wall, this look really embraces having this works of art displayed. <laughs> What I love about this look is you can actually fill every square inch of, let's say, an accent wall with different scale and size artwork done in the right way, which I'll get to, and it will work with this look. You can really fill up a wall and be bold with a gallery wall. Now, here's a little trick so it doesn't look messy or doesn't look well thought out. So you need to plan this out if you're gonna do a gallery wall. I have some tips. You wanna keep your spacing around all of the frames consistent. So if you're gonna do a two inch spacing, do it around everything on the whole wall. Plan your wall before you hang your artwork so it doesn't end up looking messy. So what I mean by that is, super simple trick, I've done it myself, is you actually will take, say, do I have a frame anywhere nearby? We'll just use my this. <laughs> Let's say this is our tiny little frame. So you're gonna measure this onto a piece of paper and then you can take that and you can actually place them and lay everything out with the paper on the walls and do all your measurements, get everything sorted and then you can keep kind of playing with it and then go and nail in your artwork to your wall. Another tip. When you have artwork that has this, I'm using this just because I don't have anything else. Say you have artwork and it has like the string that goes from end to end and it has, you know, obviously it comes up. So for measurement, pull it tight with a measuring tape. Do I have one? I don't know. So pull the string tight with the measuring tape and actually measure that distance and then hang the nail, you know, that far down. So if it pulls up and this measurement's a quarter inch from where the string is to, you know, the edge of the frame, then you know from the edge of your piece of paper or the edge of the frame, you measure down a quarter inch and that way it actually hangs exactly where you want it to, okay? Little tip. Another little trick to make this look, you know, really good, you can go super eclectic, but try to coordinate your frames. So even if you're doing a bunch of different frame styles, doing them in maybe the same color palette, so all black or all gold, will really help um, kind of curate the look and make it look more balanced in a eclectic way, if that makes sense. And another little key tidbit is try to do various sizing of frames so it looks a little bit more eclectic instead of doing all the exact same frame. I find that looks a little bit more curated, a little bit more, not on the minimalist side, but definitely more of like a contemporary side where you have everything very streamlined. This you still wanna be a little bit more organic. The biggest thing is consistency in frame, maybe color, and consistently, absolutely, you need to be consistent in frame spacing. That will make it look like a million bucks. And then fill it with artwork that you love. Treasures, stories, travels, photos, friends, loved ones, all of those things. When decorating with maximalism, we really wanna think about infusing it with things that we love. However, with that, we don't want it to look too random. So one of the little tricks is to bring some of those themes throughout the space. So let's say you love the accent color, you know, like a canary yellow, and you wanna bring that throughout your space into little touches so that it all ties together. And that's really how you take a maximalistic look that 
can go from just really eclectic and a little bit all over the place to a little bit more refined, but still with the right vibe. So one of the things I love about maximalism, and I've already mentioned it, is comfort. With minimalism, we really downsized, I would say, that kind of really cozy comfort vibe. It's very minimalistic. That's why it's minimalism. And then we really heard, I think if you recall, if you're into the interior design trends, which I mean, if you're watching that, you probably are. Um, and it was called Heige Hige, Hige Hige, something. I'm going to, I'm just, I'm going to put the word here. There was a whole movement around this and it's all about nesting style and comfort. And it's a Swedish thing, but it wasn't very stylized. It was almost more quiet, still very neutral, but very cozy. And what maximalism does is it brings in a lot of the glamor and you can bring in a lot of the color and you can bring in a lot of the fun and playfulness with that Higgy, higgy, hoogie. I don't know how it's said. Ooh, that sounded gross. I don't know how it's said. But you combine like that nesting comfortness that we had seen really talked about a couple years ago. And then with maximalism, we're bringing in a little bit more of the design elements, the color, the patterns, the creation of the space. So comfortable decor with, you know, colors, accessories, all that fun vibe stuff. And that nesting quality that was brought about in this trend from a few years back. So one of the things I love about maximalism is that I think out of all the design styles, you can really call, call it a very happy interior style. It is really good if you love color to embrace a style. You don't have to, but I find that warm color palettes really work well with this look and you know, having beautiful, bold patterns. I love, there's this wallpaper. Oh, I'm dying to do this wallpaper in my powder room. I'm going to include it somewhere here for you guys. And it's got that deep, dark black background, but it's got this super bold print. And I feel like that is like epitomizing maximalistic style. It's not, it doesn't have to be a messy or super busy, but definitely embracing some of those more bold patterns, I think is something you can really do with this look. What I love about maximalism is it isn't one particular style when it comes to what's in the space. Yes, there's some kind of, you know, ideas and thoughts behind it, but ultimately you can still infuse this with other styles. So if you like boho, you can have a maximalistic boho interior. If you like that English country look, you can have that with the maximalistic style. So you can combine the idea of maximalism with other design styles. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> One of the things I absolutely adore about maximalism is bringing in vintage items. So whether it's inherited pieces or pieces that you've thrifted or gone to a antique store, it bodes very well in a maximalistic home. What I love is that say you're drawn towards that mid-century modern, which is more on the minimalist side, but you like the furniture pieces, they work so well in this look. Honestly, you can tie them really, really well into a maximalist style. Other looks that work really well with maximalism, like from a furniture standpoint and from an accent standpoint and from a vintage standpoint, Art Deco, that's been a really popular theme lately. Art Deco and maximalism go wonderfully together. And the type of furniture, especially if you have vintage pieces from Art Deco era, oh my goodness, it will really, really work well in this look, especially with their color palettes because they really liked a lot of these emerald tones and the golds and the silvers. And that will just look super glam with this look. I think it's a really great, um, tie in with each other. So if you have some of those vintage pieces, this look is great because you can really embrace them. And again, it's your story. So if it's something that you've inherited down the line, even better. If not, if you found it at like Southworks Antiques in Cambridge, Ontario, which is a store I love, that's cool too. <laughs> I think the key takeaway about maximalism is that you don't have to be perfect. It is a very comfortable design style. It doesn't have to have any particular 
theme to it, it be, it does work best when it's somewhat imperfect because we're not perfect. So I love maximalism because I feel like it's a really authentic expression and it's an authentic expression of your own style, of your own taste and of your own experiences. And that to me is why I absolutely love maximalism and why I would say I am a maximalist. But if you haven't checked it out yet, I did talk about minimalism versus maximalism and how I definitely have a lot of minimalistic mindsets when it comes to, you know, buying stuff and all that. I like thrifting and vintage and trying to keep things a little bit more on the sustainability side. However, that being said, if you haven't checked out that video, definitely check that one out. If you're not sure which one you are, that one might explain that you can have a minimalist mindset while still being a maximalist, which is where I identify. At the end of the day, I just think maximalism is awesome. It's comfortable and I think it's available to anybody who really just wants to embrace kind of like an eclectic vibe, which I kind of feel like maximalism is just the new word for eclectic. <laughs> All right, guys, until next time. Bye.